were successful. We have people here who are, are really creative in thinking about how, how can I add more classes at the high school? John has come to us with like a million different courses. You know, over the last two years that I've served, uh, it's been amazing the type of electives we've added without actually adding staff. And, and to me, that's a testament to the quality of our, our teaching staff, to, to our entire collective staff at all of our schools. And it's just kind of strange. I mean, but I also think our kids are pretty resilient because uh, yeah, they are noticing things they don't have, but when they don't have it, they're pretty resourceful too. And I, I think with the technology, some kids do tremendous things with technology. It's not just iPads, which I you know, can harp on for about 20 minutes about why I hate them. But, uh, <laughs> but it's not just about iPads. It's about a kid who wants to you know, do music composition and needs a special program to be able to learn <coughs> how to experiment with that. There are so many different ways we can assist our kids to be creative. But when we don't have things, they're pretty creative. They actually, out of that, come some pretty interesting stuff. And, you know, but I don't want to see that happen all the time. You know, that's something that I think we need to, as a community, kind of figure out, okay, well, we've done so well, we're so successful, that that's our, you know, kind of what's getting us. I think if we, if we were even less successful, I don't know that we'd be getting the attention from the powers that be about revenue coming in, chapter seven, I just don't see it. So we're doing what we can, and I, I think we're doing pretty well. I just think we could be doing more. We didn't need to be part of Race to the Top for that, because right. we're at the top. Right. But we could be pushing that standard higher so that our kids could feel better, you know, they could say, yes, we have a new school, we have a media room where we can do things like video, and we can, you know, broadcast and this. There's so many things that they could do because I know our students are capable of it, and they're not doing it. And we could have better resources in special education, which, frankly, we could do a lot more technology there. And that's, you know, again, yeah, this opportunity is a theme. Any last questions or comments before we end? Um, I'm not sure <clears throat> all the things I'd like to say are going to come out coherently, but I'm going to do the best I can. Um, first of all, I do want to thank the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee, the Finance Committee, and our Town Administrator, and our Superintendent, and all of our administrators, because I can't tell you, um, as an advocate at the state level, sitting around tables with people from all across Massachusetts, I can certainly tell you that I have brought the concept of the finance planning team idea to so many communities. They were not doing those types of things. And the amount of cooperation that gets uh, accomplished with just that one simple idea of bringing important resources together and trying to comprehend and put your arms around something so big and so powerful and so impacting at every level, both for children and for you know members of this community, is huge. The fact that that's been going on for years in North Reading is a testament to the very people that are sitting in this room who had the idea a long time ago but are still making it work. And it helps our kids, it helps our community, and helps all the services that we provide to all the citizens of North Reading. So I applaud all the good things that are going on in our community. And I also want to say that um, a lot of assumptions are being made tonight and you know nothing is done. There's a lot of uh, work that has to be done at the state level in the months ahead in order to make sure that any of these numbers stick. They're not done, so the work still continues. And North Reading is a community where when people need to press a button to sign a petition or to create a creative sign or to go to the state house to advocate at the state level to get people together when it really matters, North Reading is a community that does do that. We do fill rooms when it's necessary, whether it's here or in Boston. And we've been a community that has shown that they are committed to quality education. What concerns me the most is what we're not really addressing tonight. And you know, I keep coming back to the concern that I really have is the 5.2% increase that we say is this year, and it wasn't the last two years because we had era stimulus funds, but we're not gonna have era stimulus funds ever. So we've got an inherent structural problem that has not been addressed tonight. It has to be addressed for the future, and a lot of that does come back to the conversations that we've had tonight, which are the difficult conversations, the tough conversations that school committee members have to have, and board of selectmen and finance <coughs> committee members need to have. And again, I want to say thank you, and I'm extremely grateful for the hard work and the sacrifices that the folks in this 
in this town and in this room actually have to make because those decisions are you know, very contentious, they're very challenging, um, they're very hurtful you know, to some people. And I do think that a lot of community members are concerned about coming to conversations like this because it does get down to who's gonna hurt so that someone can gain. And that's unfortunate, but it's where we are. And it shouldn't be that way. Um, so the 5.2% increase is here to stay unless we address much bigger issues. And that is um, related to contracts and collective bargaining and back to that health insurance thing. And I guess I've gone on record before and I guess I'm gonna go on record again tonight to say that um, you know, I've been very willing, and a lot of people in this room have been very willing over the years, to go to the state to ask for Chapter 70 funding to get the circuit breaker to fix the foundation budgets, to do all kinds of things. We're all working on these things together because we believe in quality education, but we also have to ask the employees in this community to do some cooperating and compromising because, quite frankly, um, the 2% health insurance that's built into here is also just an assumption. The insurance uh, consultant that we've hired came back with recommendations that range from 4% to 15%. Well, that's not good enough. We're looking at two. What if, what if they fail to agree to compromise? Then the $300,000 budget deficit that we're looking at is much more than that. And we're never gonna get to the back page that Carl Nelson provided on February 10th that has been sitting on my desk since then. The back page is the request for additional staff for next year as follows. High school guidance counselor that affects hundreds of students. We're never gonna get it. A middle school health teacher that's gonna keep our kids out of study halls. We're never gonna get it. Middle school technology education teacher. We just talked about eliminating the only technology resource we have in our entire school. We're never gonna get it. Special education personnel, I'm sure that that recommendation was made after a tremendous amount of effort and cooperation and consideration that, that was necessary. We're never gonna get it. Um, a district technology technician, again, these are the things we needed to add. We keep cutting back from the core. We're never gonna get these things because we have a structural inherent problem that is never gonna get addressed. And I just wanted to say that, you know, my husband's a self-employed business owner. Um, I looked at our health insurance plan and how much we're gonna pay, which is $1,400 a month. And we also have deductibles of $1,000 and $2,000, a maximum out of pocket expenses for deductibles of $2,000 and $4,000. This is the third time in three years that we've changed. Because everybody's hurting. Everybody has to, you know, make changes in their budget to live within their means and to do the right thing for their family and for the community. Um, so we need to ask all the employees that get a paycheck from this community to consider a compromise of some sort, health-related. Um, we can't have the 11% increase that we had last year. We don't have an extra $500,000 in the budget. Because every time that we have services or provide benefits like that, it hurts the very core and the foundation of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I just want to remind the community that the school budget is subsidized by over a million dollars in fees by parents. So before, before you send your kids to school at the beginning of the year, you pay $400 for the first sport that they pay, the $250 or $450 bus ride that they take, the $125 for the extracurricular activity that they participate in, and that's not to mention the thousands, three and four thousand dollars that it costs to send a pre-K pre or a kindergarten student to, um, to our programs here in North Reading. There's a survey that's provided every year that it's updated, and I went on, online today to see if it was the most updated I could find. And as far as the inequities in Chapter 70 funding and um, the foundation budgets and so forth, you know, we are supplementing our school budget by a million dollars. There are communities, and many of them, that charge absolutely no fees at all. And that should have parents outraged so that the room is filled just for that reason alone. Um, communities like Wilmington, Woburn, Revere, Lawrence, Weston, Thuin, Malden, Lynn, Burlington, Cambridge, Chelsea, Chicopee, Everett, Falmouth, Bedford, 
Brockton, every vocational reading <coughs> school, none of these school systems pay fees. And our kids can't participate in a sport, they can't be in a photography club, they can't be in maskers, they can't do any of those things without the parents writing a check. And that's part of a core curriculum of well-balanced education, and it's not something that we even provide. So we have bigger problems than $300,000 reductions. We have parents already funding the budget by a million dollars. We have contracts that are gonna force us to have a 5.2% increase and more next year and the year after, no matter what we do. So I wanna applaud all of your efforts. I really am so grateful for all the work that our town and municipal leaders provide in the leadership. I know you've made great strides and I'm gonna encourage you to continue to do that. And I guess I'm going to leave you with, if you value it, you're going to pay for it. I value education. I hope a lot of other people will come to the table and show that you do too. Thanks. Any last questions or comments? Great. I want to thank everybody for um, coming tonight. Um, at this time, I will um, close the public hearing. And again, um, we will work with the selectmen moving forward. Uh, we'll vote on a budget on the 25th. Hopefully the money fairy appears uh, somewhere over the next few weeks. I'm not counting on it, but uh, <laughs> again, thank you all for coming. Thanks to the administration for um, all the work that put these uh, meetings together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to